give me a whole bunch of love. So I'm going to give y'all a little test. All right? When I say inspired, you say word. Inspired. Word. Inspired. Word. Oh, you sound good. You sound good. Good, good, good. good. I right, have an amazing show for you tonight. Are y'all ready to get this show started? Yeah. yeah. I need a whole bunch of energy because somebody's got to be the first poet. And I know y'all signed this list. But we ain't paying no attention to these numbers, so it could be anybody in this room. Alright, so I need y'all to show a whole bunch of love for the first poet up to the mic. Y'all gotta keep it going, y'all gotta make it loud. Hello. <laughs> I'm Morty Mandel, I rap real well. Give me four minutes time to talk and rhyme. I'll make you smile all the while. Let me kick it a minute with you with this one. It's called Medical Marijuana Rap. <laughs> The law won't consider it a misdeed if you're real sick and you smoke weed. Because for some sick people, weed can be better than the drugs at the pharmacy. The farthest person can smoke a joint. Keep in mind the following point. Debilitating sickness, there must be, like Crohn's disease or HIV. Things like the common cold already know. If you smoke pot, to jail you'll go. Here's what the law says you must do or they'll put an orange jumpsuit on you. To your doctor's office, you must drop by and the following you must certify that you're real sick or have lots of pain and your only hope is with Mary Jane. The doc must be legit, not a joke, otherwise you don't get the tote. Then to the health department, you stop by and for a ID card, you apply. Don't forget that you must pay a fee or the card you won't see. Within two weeks and one day, to your hand, the card must make its way. When you get the card, some joints you can roll or use a bomb vaporizer or bowl. As with the law, it's okay to use the grass in any kind of way. For these sick people, though, it's a crime to possess too much reefer at one time. Just six plants and one usable ounce. More than that, when you the low pounds, insurance companies don't have to reimburse the cost of the pot to you. Note that the law won't think it's cool if you light up at a beach park or school. I hate being a woman. I hate waking up each month with a soggy realization that I am one. My boyfriend had the audacity to say, Great. You're on the rat. Okay, fine. Was I asked if I wanted to have children? Have eight pounds of flesh ripped from my body and have it gnaw on my tit every three hours? Bleed every month from cramps that cripple me into the fetal position? 800 hormones telling me to cry, eat, cry again, or beat anybody with a nine mile radius with a baseball bat. <laughs> Call me a bitch because we made Adam bite the apple? I hate being a woman. I hate sobbing hysterically, profoundly, because I ran out of Cheerios for breakfast. I hate the uncontrollable fury that spews from my mouth because I had to wait in line at the gas station. I hate the only sense of power I'll ever get is if I weaken a man with my sex. My sex. I hate being a woman. Feeling old from all the promises made, then broken by men, by mothers, by fathers, by weakness, by believing it between my legs. I hate the mini skirts, the bras, the heels. I hate Revlon and Cosmo 17 and all those damn bridal magazines. I hate when women look in their mirrors naked, defeated. I hate lipstick. I hate when women can't tell the difference between the ice cream and Prozac. I hate when women go to the bathroom in twos. I hate tampon commercials. I hate being a woman. You know what I want? I want to walk into a crowded store one day and stand in the middle of the feminine product aisle and proudly take my sweet ass time deciding on the right absorbency, grab me some ho-hos and a bag of Cheetos, then march my happy ass to the most irked male teen punk cashier and say, Oh, wait. This coupon calls for super absorbing. <laughs> then give him that look. Tell him with my PMS eyes to get me the right tampons and a Diet Coke. I want dessert after a three-course 
meal. I don't want my future daughter to think a handsome prince will come and whisk her away. I don't want to be the damsel in distress. I want a man, not a boy. I love being a girl. I love not bleeding. I love not hurting. I love not having a body to worry about. I love just being. I love not caring if the word pretty was meant for me. I love just knowing it. Really? All I want is a kiss, a hug, a touch, or anything that will tell me that being a woman is not in vain. I hate being a woman, but I wouldn't want to be a man. <laughs> short tune I'm going to play on my harmonica. Yeah! Which we don't really play these days. It's about Tom, Tom Dooley. You don't know about Tom Dooley. He was an impoverished Confederate veteran, Tom Dooley, in L.A. Laura Foster's lover. And probable fiancé was convicted of a murder and hanged May 1st, 1868. Forrester was stabbed to death with a large knife. I love it. He was hanged, but I don't think that's really true. Because Forrester found that his love was seeing somebody else. Quick tune. I don't think I'm pretty good at it, but I'll try anyway. And then I have a story to read about this. So for one way now. I want it. my brother and our babysitter James. And I was on the high dive and everyone was like, jump! And I'm all scared and I want to go back down, but there's someone climbing up the ladder behind me and they're like, jump! And I look down at my speedo and I have a boner. And everyone starts laughing and pointing, so I jump! I hit the water with a splash and go down, 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 down. And I'm swimming up and up and up. And I'm not getting to the top and I'm holding my breath and it's running out. And wham! I wake up in the hobble with my heart beating like a tom-tom. My breath halts because I reach my hand down under my ass and it's warm and wet and the bed is soaked. And I'm like, fuck. And that lady is like asleep right next to me. And I'm all embarrassed and I'm in a pool of urine. I'm trying not to move around too much because I don't want to wake her up and everything. And how do you explain peeing yourself when you're like old and shit? <laughs> and this doesn't happen often or anything, but it has happened. But it's usually when I'm passed out drunk or something, like that time I was at my friend's parents' beach house and we got lit the fuck up over Fourth of July weekend. Yes! And I woke up in the guest bed with soaked sheets and the mattress was soaked with piss and it was a mess. So I bundled up a lot of it and went out in the woods and buried the bundle of pissy sheets and rifled through his mom's linen closet at 4 in the a.m. looking for bedding. His mom comes out in the hallway and is like, what the heck's going on? And I'm like trying to play like I'm looking for the bathroom when I'm on the opposite side of the house from where my room is. And she's all suspicious and like, go back to bed. And then I have to give it a go later in the night and dig into the linen closet and find some bedding. But I get it back to the guest room and it's linens for a king size bed. And I'm in this little cot. And I'm like, fuck this. And I just pull a blanket over the bed and sort it out in the morning. Then the rest of the weekend, I'm paranoid that his mom or someone will find the pissy sheets out in the woods, so I dig in the woods myself and bury them better. It's just stupid sometimes, things I get myself into. Anyway, that lady named Danella who lives in the project stirs awake and I pretend to be asleep. And I'm like, fuck's sake, this sucks. And there's no way she doesn't feel the piss so bad. 
because the both of us are sitting in a pool of urine and it's a futon, so it's like this big pissy sponge. And she starts fussing and gets out of the bed and is all moaning and carrying on with hush line because she's trying to be quiet and does not want to wake me up. And then I get to thinking because of the way she's carrying on and fussing and being quiet that it was her who peed my bed. And then I feel embarrassed for her because she's all grown and I made her stay over because I didn't want to walk her down the street because I don't want to get jacked up by an 11 year old thug on the corner. And now she's peed my bed and was all embarrassed. And I'm like trying to be still in the bed when my face is facing her. But she can probably see my twitching eyelids that won't sit still. And my mouth is moving and I have to swallow and I try and make like I'm asleep. And she leaves the room and I'm like, did she split? I finally swallow and I'm piss soaked and I confirm that it was her when I reach over to where she was sleeping. I thought my side of the bed was pissy, but her side was like a goddamn lake bed. And then she comes back in the room all fussy and I close my eyes and I lay back in the pissy bed. I can hear her ripping paper towels and it's sad. I feel bad for her and I'm lying in a pool of warm piss and it's absurd. She shakes me awake and is all moaning and embarrassed and I'm like, it's all right. And she's like, I knew I shouldn't have stayed over. And I'm like, don't worry about it. I'm trying to play like it's no big deal, but my food is going to smell like a cat box. And that's it. She promised me she's going to buy me a new futon, but I tell her no. And she insists. And I'm like, don't worry about it. And she's trying to soak up the piss with paper towels. And we have them cheap ass bodega paper towels that are good for nothing. She's moaning, and I'm like in my skivvies, and I look ridiculous because they're gray. And my ass is a darker shade of gray because it's soaked with urine. And she tells me that she needs to go get a hairdryer to dry out the pissy futon. She tells me she has to go home and get it. And I'm thinking, this type of shit must happen to her a lot. Because I don't know how to use a hairdryer. But it sounds like she's done this before, and then she leaves, and I don't blame her when she never comes back. That lady, Danella, never calls me again. And I'm like, whatever. I'm not sure what to do about the pissy bed. But I know it's going to reek like hell, and the mice would probably love a good pissy futon to burrow in. So I put it out in the street, and the crackhead dude is out there, and he's like, you getting rid of it? And I'm like, it's no good. And he's like, why? And I'm like, it's got piss all over it. And he's like, he looks at me like I did. And his face all twisted up, and I don't care. I go back inside the apartment and I tell my brother that maybe we should get cracking and go look at apartments. He just looks at me like he's trying to figure out why I'm saying this, and he rubs his nose and sniffles and asks me when. We walk down the street to get on the F train, and we see that crackhead dude lying down on my pissy futon, and my brother recognizes my boutique futon cover, and he's like, isn't that your bed? And I'm like, yeah. My brother twists up his face and shakes his head. And I can tell that now he's got some idea why I told him we should get cracking and go look at apartments. Um, how y'all doing? Hey! Y'all looking good. Give it up for poetry. Sometimes I feel like I have to sit back and try to catch my breath because even though physically I'm not tired emotionally, mentally, morally, I can't stand up no more. My feet. Sometimes I feel like I have to sit back and try to catch my breath because even though physically I'm not tired, emotionally, mentally, morally, I can't stand up no more. My feet hurt. Same feet that walk me through the dirty sidewalks of indifference, inequality, insecurity, hate, and rage are the same feet that dance on the elegant dance floor of temptations, wrong intentions, and confusion are the same feet that are trying to walk away and get some rest because they know that the path of my life is long and complicated. They know that before they can step on feather-like clouds, they have to step on thin ice and raging fire and eventually learn to fly. Damn, I gotta sit down. Sometimes I feel like I have to sit back and try to catch my breath because even though I don't work with my hands anymore, my fingers hurt. My fingers hurt from holding on to this world where if you let go of your mama's coach, you find yourself lost in the marketplace. A marketplace where the color of your skin determines your aspirations, the brand of your clothes determines your identity. A marketplace where your sexual preference limits your freedom. Hell no. My hands won't let go. They know they have to squeeze and pulverize this crown of thorns that oppresses before they can caress the immaculate velvet of peace. I gotta sit down. Sometimes I feel like I have to sit back and try to catch my breath because my back hurts from trying to carry everybody else's crosses along with mine, from picking up everybody else's crosses along with mine, from picking up so many bad habits, bad memories, bad friends, and all the past pain that I carry with me. Damn, I gotta sit down. Use this very day to recharge myself with positive energy. Use it for prayer, for reflection, to think about my legacy and where I want to take it. Take time to be grateful for my feet, my hands, my neck, my back, so I can be ready to get up and search for peace of mind, like Lauren said. I gotta find peace of mind. Well done. <laughs>
focus, but my vision wasn't quite clear. You see, I had to fight fair, stay strong in white tears. I see the goal, I can't reach it, but it's right there. It's bittersweet, sort of like an addiction. My mind is telling me quit, but my heart will never listen. Feels like I'm wasting my time. Why am I living? Did nine months in a hole, now I'm serving a life sentence. It's easy to look from the outside in and not see the struggle and wonder why I failed time and again. That's why I never let the outside in. I'm tired of losing dogs and trying to win. I swear to God, homie. Tried to commit suicide on the floor. Got it myself because my man was making moves on the low. You see, I'm running from my own problems instead of trying to solve them. I'm a lost cause for real slash product of Harlem. But it's still the same nightmare. My face full of white streaks from the tears. I'm waking up in cold sweats overcome by the fear. The fear of being a failure, the fear of being forever scared. The fear I was reaching for something that was never there. You see, it's hard to face the fact that I might never get on. I guess that's why I put my soul in the song. I had to struggle so long. You feel the pain and the hurt, and yet the struggle goes on. This is an entry to my diary and a verse of a song. But I keep reciting though my voice is aching. Even though my mind's tired, I still feel I can make it. My spirit's almost broken, man, I swear I can't take it. But I'd rather die trying to chase this dream. Every time it's in my grass, I feel it slipping away. And it takes my mind back to reminiscing of days in a basement, recording headphones for a mic. See, this is much more than music. This is my life. But the truth hurts. This is much more than a verse in a rhyme scheme. This is the reason I breathe, the core confines of my being. It's like the light support, the beat streams through the IV, the bass is shocking my chest, the reason my heart beats. The drums is my lungs, that's the reason that I breathe. The instruments, my ligaments, I move, now I see Till the day of the death of me, I'm in charge of my destiny I'm still chasing it, but y'all can make it a reality It's changing weather, got me feeling a little under the weather Inspirational words, right? The main story of my life is heavy frustration Immigrant son, first born to the nation Moms took a plane just to switch plantation. Stuck in the world of low wage occupation. Pops was a waste with a taste for recreation. Hustling cars was his deep fascination. Had a good job, never chased elevation. Running from the mob, we had to take a vacation. Now I'm growing up, things are getting hazy. Knew I had a brain, but the teachers called me lazy. Call of the streets, hip hop would amaze me. I apologize, cause I drove my mom crazy. Spending all my time on the wild, talking over beats. My mom's caught over in the house, holding heat. Thought I was grown, now I'm all up in beef. I won't say names, people shooting in the streets. Early gray hairs, cause time was getting hard. Death was rolling with my 7 0 squad. Some got killed, some went behind bars. And me, I got through it with the grace of the God. Still rolling, still riding, still heading to the sun, still climbing. Still radiating light, still shining. No matter what you do, we keep rising. I still see my pop face at the airport, smelling like a Newport. Tears in my eyes again, him sipping Heineken. Fork tongue spoken because he's telling all these lies again. Mom just left me choking on my breath. Mom was a silent, that left the violence. Me in the corner still praying to the highest. Never changed nothing because my pop was a tyrant. Beating on his wife's arm, reaching for the knife. Four years old, ready to attack. Swing up his arm, everything turns black. I gotta thank my moms, cause my moms got me back. Cause at four years old, I was kidnapped. How I got through it, man, I'll never understand. Scarred me for life, my example of a man. Fatherless children, yo, I always give a hand. Hoping that you get to the point where I am still rolling, still riding. Still heading to the sun, still climbing, still radiating light, still shining. No matter what you do, we keep rising. I remember how that hot summer heat had me roaming through the streets, looking good with a tan, just coming from the beach. Digging for a shorty, so I'm strapped to my cleats. Boogie down style, you know we rolling on our feet. I headed to the villa every year, they had a fair. Stay away to heaven, seeing women everywhere. Checking out this blonde that's giving me the glare. Ah, oh, shit. Jungle fever's in the air. <laughs> no. Not my type of lady, but this shorty had a bump. And booty is booty, real dudes won't front. <laughs> they said, hey, you little nigga. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They said, hey, you little nigga. Next thing I'm getting jumped. 
one against 12, so you know I got lumped. Now I'm on the block with the seven old clan. No such thing as you take it like a man. All riled up and revenge was the plan. Next thing you know, I had the steel in my hand. Visions of white boys falling to the ground. Then I thought about it and I put that gun down. Best thing I did, I don't care how it sound. Cause if I chose death, then I wouldn't be around. Still rolling, still riding, still heading to the sun, still climbing, still radiating light, still shining. No matter what they do, I keep rising. No matter what they do, you keep rising. No matter what they do, we keep rising. No matter what they do, I keep rising. No